Ira Gershwin chose to reference tomatoes, potatoes, pajamas, and oysters when he wrote the lyrics to the Clash of Cultures classic Let's Call the Whole Thing Off back in 1937. Had he been working more recently, he might have sneaked in a reference to compact Ford crossovers. Because while we say escape, Europeans say Kyuga, even though what we are talking about is pretty much the exact same car. There are differences. Europe market Kyugas are built in Spain and typically ship with diesel engines, while our escapes come from Kentucky and burn gasoline. But now there's set to be another point of distinction, with those snooty Europeans launching what's meant to be a luxury version, the Kyuga Vignal. Unlikely as it seems, Ford of Europe is deadly serious about its new Vignal brand, planning to create lux iterations of everything from the sub-compact Fiesta to the Minivan like Smax. Having sold off both Jaguar and Land Rover when times were tougher, Ford no longer has any swankier brand in Europe, Lincoln has never had a presence on the continent, and Vignal models are meant to fill some of the gap. We're told that they are positioned above the existing model hierarchy and are aimed at customers who otherwise would go for a premium brand. As you'd expect, the Kiga Vignal gets plusher trim and more standard equipment than its workaday cousin and indeed it comes fitted with pretty much every available option. But it also will be sold differently, from no hustle lounges inside select Ford dealerships to the offer of pickup and op servicing and even a concierge service that claims to be capable of getting tickets for sold out shows. These perks are similar to those offered to buyers of Lincoln Black Label models in the US. The company says that Vignal variants will undergo extra quality checks during assembly as well which might make buyers of lesser Kyugas wonder just what Ford is willing to overlook on their cars. Luxury slathered on with a butter knife, there are no sheet metal changes between the Vignal and its proletarian cousins, the Vignal is not a Europeanized Lincoln MKC, so it's fair to say similarities are far more marked than the differences. The Uber Kyuga gets prominent Vignal badges on its fenders and liftgate, 18-inch chrome effect aluminium wheels, shinier trim and an egg crate grill in place of the slatted escape like one used on ordinary Cougars. Inside the cabin things get odder, and the urge to use a metaphor referencing pigs and lipstick becomes almost overwhelming. Vignal is meant to be about luxury, but the plush and materials seem to have been added with more enthusiasm than finesse. So, while power adjustable leather front seats with a striking quilted stitch pattern feel both comfortable and classy. The matching door trim and dashboard tops have basically been pasted atop the considerably cheaper Kyuga grade items, highlighting the contrast between the two. The switch gear is unchanged and feels particularly plastic given the upmarket aspirations, even if the central display screen gets a Vignal welcome page. Our test car was the range topper, with a 178 horsepower version of Ford's long serving C2.0 litre diesel in Linfer basically the same engine we've previously sampled in the Europeanly diesel Focus Street, and with both all-wheel drive and a six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. Other driver trains are available, including two less powerful diesels and a 180 horsepower gasoline model using the EcoBoost 1.5-litre inland fur. Although the gas engine has fractionally more power, the diesel is more expensive due to the continued popularity of compression ignition in Euroland. Kind of loud, but at least it's slow, as four-cylinder diesels go, the C is not a bad engine, although it is conspicuously lacking in firepower when considered against more modern European rivals. The engine is noticeably louder than Volkswagen's latest Eurospec TDI even under gentle use and gets very vocal when worked hard but it has more than enough mid-range torque to make respectable progress without breaking a sweat. Acceleration is disappointing, though, with Ford's claims of a leisurely 10.0 seconds 0 to 62 mph time looking very slow compared with the U.S. spec escape that we ran from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.1 seconds. It certainly left us with no enthusiasm to sample any of the less powerful variants. Ford says the base diesel takes a yawning 12.7 seconds to get to 62 miles per hour. On the plus side, the all-wheel drive system coped well with the sometimes snowy conditions we drove in, and the rest of the behind thrill experience stays predictably close to that delivered by the standard Kyuga, one of the better handling cars in its segment.
aided by torque vectoring. The steering is direct and front-end response is keen, understeer is resisted admirably, and ride quality is good. It doesn't have the dynamic character of many of the cars Ford has priced it against, but its laid-back demeanor gives it a point of difference over firmer riding German rivals. But it's when discussion moves to price that the Kiga Vignal's rear distortion field flickers and dies. European car pricing is higher than in the States, but even so, the UK price of the 2.0-litre CAWD power shift we drove looks fairly preposterous at £35,890 including the requisite 20% value-added tax, or $45,000 at current exchange rates. That makes the Vignal as expensive as a BMW X3, X-Drive 20D and Blighty. The Ford has more standard equipment, plus that concierge service, but the BMW is nearly 2 seconds quicker to 62 miles per hour. The Kiga Vignal finds Ford's European division trying to solve a problem that Dearborn has already addressed with the Lincoln MKC. While we aren't huge fans of the Lincoln, it's certainly a more convincing version of a posh escape. The tomato to the Vignal's potato.